Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Restoration Druids going into Shadowlands. Restoration has had its ups and downs throughout BFA, starting the expansion off strong before slowly falling out of the meta. So how are they looking in Shadowlands? Well, we've hit up Lone Tar, a multi-rank 1 healer who's recently placed third in the EU AWC. Lone Tar has shared his thoughts on how the spec is looking going forward, as well as all the information you need to get your own Restoration Druid started the second the Sinful Arena Season 1 begins. This will include a look at races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and even legendaries. As with all of these videos, we'll be releasing a refresher guide once Season 1 begins that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with taking a more advanced look at how to heal, perfect your playstyle, and discussing compositions. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. And for more information on Lone Tar, you can catch him streaming here on Twitch. So to kick things off, let's take a look at what's changed coming from BFA. Well, the core gameplay of Restoration remains for the most part the same, relying heavily on their healing over time effects to heal through incoming damage. In Shadowlands though, there have been a few new additions. The much welcomed Return of Nature's Swiftness is probably the most exciting, as well as Heart of the Wild and much stronger affinities with Feral giving Maim, Guardian giving Incapacitating Roar, and Balanced Typhoon. Swiftmen has also seen a revert to how it once was back in Cataclysm, consuming healing over time effects in order to use. Also, Restoration has seen some abilities added back baseline, including Stampeding Roar, Ferocious Bite, Iron Fur, and best of all, Cyclone. So overall, nothing really game-changing, but some nice additions going forward. As a result, the playstyle of Druid hasn't really seen much change. You can adopt two different styles depending on your composition, which has been the same for some time. You can look to go an aggressive build, picking up Feral Affinity with the new MAME, Heart of the Wild, and some more aggressive PvP talents like Master Shapeshifter. We more than likely expect this to be the meta in 2v2. Alternatively, a more healing slash defensive build with Guardian Affinity, full healing PvP talents, and just focusing around cycloning and keeping your teammates alive will be another viable playstyle. So, the question you've more than likely come here for, how is Restoration Druid performing, what's good and what's bad? Well, firstly, coming from BFA, Druids were bottom of the barrel. Now, in Shadowlands, they are looking to be top tier. They have insane healing, both from their healing over time effects and the ability to burst heal with Swift Mend and Nature's Swiftness. And when Druids do good healing, they naturally find a place in the meta due to their insane CC, which has only been added to with Maim and Incapacitated Roar, not to mention now not having to spend a PvP talent slot on Cyclone. So, overall, Druids are in a very, very good spot, which is exciting. But that does beg the question, do they need some tuning down or some buffs on some other things to compensate? We asked Lone Tar and he said they're in a pretty good spot and he's happy with how they perform overall. Although if there was some tuning, the one thing that stands out is the power of nature's swiftness. This combined with Druid's mastery and full healing over time effects can cause upwards of 80k regrowths, which when you consider a standard HP pool on beta is 35k, it's maybe a bit excessive. Oh, and if you're enjoying the video so far and would like to show your support to the channel, it would be incredible if you could hit that subscribe button. So, with the overview out of the way, let's now talk about how to set up your own Restoration Druid ready for the new expansion. First of which is picking your race. Starting on Alliance, there is one clear winner, which is of course Night Elf. Not only do Night Elves look great, but the power of Shadow Melt is insane when it comes to Druids. It enables you to drop combat so that you can enter Prowl, which you can then use to rake stun, go for drinks, or just simply avoid hard-hitting spells or CC. Moving on to the Horde, for Restoration, the clear winner is Torrent. Especially now that Cyclone is baseline, War Stomp just gives some nice extra utility and can be an easy way to secure a Cyclone. Not fantastic, but compared to the other options Horde has, Torn is the clear winner. Alright, with races covered, let's now take a look at the new talent trees and which talents you should pick for Arena. For the first talent row, Cenarian Ward is going to be the best choice. Currently, it heals for a large amount, counts towards your mastery, and cannot be purged. Cenarian Ward can be a great tool to apply to targets before you get CC'd giving the target some additional healing. And as you can see, the standard pick of Prosperity providing you an extra Swift Men charge and a reduced cooldown is no longer an option. The level 30 row remains the same as Shadowlands, and in the majority of your games, you'll want to pick up Wild Charge, which is the best option for mobility. This gives you the ability to charge and root in bear form, leap behind your enemy and slow them in cap form, a short leap in travel form, and fly into your ally if in no form. This is just the best option when it comes to mobility and kiting and should be default. 
The only time you'll ever want to consider changing this is when you think renewal offers better value. An example of this is against certain teams where you'll be unable to kite, and thus the extra healing and defensive from renewal will provide more value. Moving down a row, we now get to see the newly buffed affinities, and here we have, again, two options. Guardian Affinity should be your default pick, and especially so in 3v3. This gives you great added defensive utility and is a must if you're at risk of being focused. It provides you access to Thrash, Iron Fur, and Frenzied Regeneration, and the new addition of Incapacitating Roar, which is great for securing Cyclones. However, in those matchups where you don't think you're going to be the target or for 2v2, you can pick up Feral Affinity. You lose a lot of defensive power, but you gain access to Rake, Rip, Swipe, and Maim, as well as added movement speed and energy regeneration in cat form. Now, having access to Maim on top of the Rake stun makes Druids great at setting up kills or securing CC with your team on top of the added damage. Balance Affinity, just to quickly mention, can be considered in rare cases into mages in specific as a way to avoid polymorph and still cast Cyclone or Regrowth, something top players utilize in things like RMD mirrors, so quite rare, but keep it in mind. Anyway, for the most part, Guardian Affinity, and if you can get away with it or need the added damage, pick Feral Affinity. Carrying on with the level 60 row, we have the choice between Bash, Mass Entanglement, and the newly added Heart of the Wild. Again, in the majority of matches in 3v3 and as default, you're going to want Bash. I mean, it's a 1 minute CD stun, what's not to love? That being said though, Heart of the Wild is something to consider in a few scenarios. If your team doesn't need added stuns, Heart of the Wild essentially empowers your chosen affinity, so this paired up with Feral Affinity is great for 2v2, providing you a 30% damage increase and added combo points. Alternatively, Heart of the Wild can be paired up with Guardian Affinity, giving you added stamina and an extra charge of Frenzied Regeneration, which can be great when running a full defensive setup versus compositions likely to heavily focus you down. So to decide here, simply take your affinity choice, bracket, and matchup into account. Then lastly, in some rare scenarios, Mass Entanglement is great to root melee in order for you to kite, mainly in 2v2. For the level 40 row, there isn't much to talk about. Soul of the Forest is simply the best hands down, providing you a huge bonus to your next regrowth or rejuvenation after Swift Mending. This is now even stronger thanks to the addition of Nature's Swiftness, as you can combine the two for basically a lay on hands. Then on the penultimate row, it's again only really one option. Inner Peace and Spring Blossoms are primarily for PvE, and we have a new addition which is Overgrowth, which is now a standard talent instead of just a PvP one. Overgrowth obviously gives you an extra recovery mechanic and easy way to get up your healing over time effects, the clear choice here. Then on our final row, Germination is again a no-brainer, which simply allows you to put two rejuves on a target, extra healing, extra mastery, not much else to say. And that concludes our talent section. Now let's jump over to the PvP talents. Now with Cyclone being baseline and Overgrowth now being a standard talent, it's opened up a lot of options for our PvP talents. Of course, there is one talent you'll never want to play without, and that's Focused Growth. This allows you to put up three life blooms on a target, as well as reducing the mana cost and healing, never swap this out. Then we actually have the choice between a few talents to fill the last two slots. The best way to do this is to cover them all and talk about when you'll want to play with them. First is Thorns. Whenever there is melee in the game, you'll want this added damage, added slow, and this also acts as a pseudo-defensive, making melee attackers think twice before attacking your target. Reactivate Resin is again something that you'll want when facing melee cleaves, providing added healing when they suffer a critical strike, as well as increasing the duration of rejuvenation. High Winds is a new talent, which is actually deceptively strong. What this does is reduce a target's damage by 25% after coming out of Cyclone. This is great for games where you're consistently cycloning DPS in order to peel, and this will further reduce their damage and make healing a lot easier. Mark of the Wild is a great pickup into any balance, mage, or even shaman teams for the added damage reduction. This can also be picked up simply for purge protection versus shaman or priests. Then, the last PvP talent worth covering is Master Shapeshifter. This has two uses. First is for a purely defensive option, paired up with Guardian Affinity versus Melee Cleaves who are looking to focus you providing a 10% reduction to critical hits while inside of bear form. More commonly though, you'll want Master Shapeshifter for its added damage while you're in cat form. This is primarily the go-to PvP talent for 2v2 for that very reason. So, in summary, pick up Focused Growth and then swap around depending on your matchup, game plan, or bracket. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the new additions to the game added with Shadowlands, which are Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendaries. First of all, let's begin with the Covenant choice. For Resto Druid, there is really only one option as of right now, and that's Necrolord. The sole reason for this is to gain access to the Adaptive Swarm class ability. 
This ability is extremely powerful. Not only is it a powerful healing over time effect that you can give your ally that also adds to mastery, but it also comes with an extremely short cooldown at 25 seconds. Siding with the Necrolord also gives you access to Fleshcraft, adding some nice extra self-survivability on top of the immunity to CC if the full channel is completed. Now that we've sided with the Necrolords, it's time to choose a Soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. And there are three Soulbinds available to the Necrolords. These are Emony, Plague Divisor Merilith, and Bonesmith Hammer. Out of these three, you'll want to pick up Plague Divisor Merilith. The main reason for this is two abilities in particular, Ooze's Frictionless Coating and Ultimate Form. Ultimate Form gives you four seconds of CC immunity after channeling Fleshcraft, and as you can see, the Frictionless Coating acts as a last stand if you drop below 50% with a very short CD, giving you the ability to survive swaps a lot easier. On screen now, you can see the Soulbind route that we recommend. Now, you may have noticed there are a lot of gaps. Well, these are filled with what's called a conduit. Conduits are separated into three categories, finesse, potency, and endurance. Potency focuses on damage, finesse focuses on mobility and utility, and then endurance is all about surviving and defensives. Following the selected soulbind route from above, we gain access to two potency conduits, one finesse and one endurance. For our first slot, we have potency, and for this, you'll want to pick up ready for anything. What this does is reduce the cooldown of nature's swiftness, meaning that you'll have this powerful lay on hands back a lot sooner. After which you'll have to then pick up a finesse, in which we recommend going for Born of the Wilds, reducing the cooldown of Bash by up to 24%. And then for our second potency conduit, Floral Recycling, which heavily buffs the healing of your Swiftmen. Last up for our Endurance slot, Innate Resolve is the best choice, giving a huge boost to regrowth and friends in regeneration healing on yourself. So this will leave our completed Soulbind tree looking like so. All right, then last but not least, let's talk legendaries. Legendaries are again making their return to the game. This time though, there is a new selection and they all work in arena. Currently, you're only able to equip one at a time, but this may or may not change in the future. As of right now, there are two main legendaries that you'll want to aim for. First and likely strongest is Verdant Infusion. Purely healing wise, this offers the most benefit, making your swift men, instead of consuming healing over time effects, extend the duration by six seconds. This just allows you to keep your hots up as well as saving you a ton of mana. Alternatively is the Circle of Life and Death. This allows your hots to do their healing in 15% less time, as well as any damage over time effects, so this is also useful for DPS in 2v2 for instance, giving you the buffs to your Moonfire, Sunfire, and Pharaoh Bleeds while also still benefiting your healing. This is a good all-around legendary. Alright then everyone, that's going to conclude our first look at Restoration Druids in the up-and-coming expansion Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on the information that you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to heal, perfect your playstyle, and even which your best compositions are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.